Hello, everyone, and welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Converge here in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host and analyst, Rob Strecce. Rob, it has been a day. So many product announcements, enhancements, refinements, so many great conversations that we're having here on theCUBE with NetApp executives as well as, as, well as partners and, and customers. Yeah, and I think that's it. The whole idea of outcomes and solutions tied to these announcements has been fantastic and we're going to get to bring it all together again. Jeff, we're going to need you to take it home for us. I'd like okay. to introduce our next guest, our, la our final guest. Next, to last, today, final, either today way. Today on theCUBE, Jeff Baxter, VP of Product Marketing here at NetApp. Thank Thanks you so much me. for coming on theCUBE. Thank you for having me. So this has been an incredible event. Um, I mean, it's, it's still ongoing, but as VP of Product Marketing, I'd love you to talk a little bit about what you want customers, partners, and even our viewers at home to take away from, from what we're hearing about today. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a tremendous event. It's a great time for the NetApp community to come together. I've been with NetApp for 16 years. I started in sales here, right? So a lot of these folks are family for me. And so, uh, especially after COVID, being able to get back all together in person is just amazing. And we had the luck, or, or actually, to be quite honest, we planned it this way, of having a major launch at the same time so that we could celebrate that launch together. Um, which was awesome, except I had to do this and the launch at the same time, so I don't know why I planned <laughs> yeah, that for myself. Yeah, yeah. But other than that, it was amazing. So yeah, we just we got to share the good news with everyone. Um, you know, obviously some pre-briefs over the last week, but then the really huge launch um, today and everything, and it's just been seen amazing traction online, a lot from the cube already. So we appreciate that, and um, it's just just been tremendous response to everyone, everyone in the Net family. And, and there's been really kind of three things that you really want to yep. hammer home here. Yep. What, what are those three things? So there's really three things about the announcement this week, um, or today. It's really around unified data storage for the AI era, right? Which are enhancements to our new unified data storage. I know you've talked to, to many people here, right? But the FFA series is our thoroughbred for unified data storage, right? Our high performance array. And so the refresh of that line really injects a, a shot of adrenaline, so to speak, into our mid-range and high-end uh, performance flash system. So with the new AFF A1K, the AFF A90, and the AFF A70, right? Amazing new storage, we've optimized it, it's ready to take on AI workloads and pretty much anything else you want to throw at it. Right, and one of the things we didn't hit on though that I yeah. wanted to hit on was, sure. and I, I think was neat in that lineup, was the flexibility of it. Yeah. Scale up, scale down, yep. start small, grow big. Yeah. And I, I think that to me, even though we didn't hit on it and yep. we talked about it, you know, you're still getting the 40 million IOPS, which yeah. is like crazy. Yeah, so. that, that's always been the hallmark of NetApp going back decades, right, is the ability to fundamentally flex and the ability to have, you know, we have the single unified storage operating system with ONTAP and you can start at a very small level, scale up to a massive level and it's the same environment. And we have customers who've started with one small system and built it into a gargantuan cluster now doing, you know, up to 40 million IOPS or one terabyte per second of throughput, right? And it's just grown that way over decades. We have customers who've had the same cluster the same system up for a decade while well, the hardware is refreshed underneath it and it's just never gone down on them. And so that's, that's a key part of our initiative is being able to have that unified data storage that just keeps going and then offering all these different flavors, right? Even in the launch today, integrated systems versus modular systems, have your choice and, and lead it to where the customer needs it to go. Yeah, and then you had two other things that I kind of interrupted you yeah, no, about. No. But, you know. no. Yeah, so the two other things were really, you know, we continue to say that we are the most secure storage on the planet, and I think we have all the plaudits and proof points to prove it. I won't spend the next, you know, 25 minutes, you know, listing them unless you want. Well, we, we <laughs> talked about uh, yeah. no such agency, and we yeah. talked about CISA and yeah. all the good stuff that you're doing there. I don't know what agency that is. I don't, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, but I mean, so all of this work we're doing there, and then we just continue to enhance it, right? So. Um, with the addition of uh, autonomous ransomware protection now building an AI model in so it could be 99% 99% plus accuracy um, being able to have the tamper-proof snapshots built in and now elevating it into this cyber vault architecture that we built to really make it easy for our customers and what I love about it, and you may have heard this from some of your other guests is the cyber vault concept actually came from our customers right um, and a lot of our customers were taking the tools we had built and already building them into cyber vaults and we said this is amazing let's support you let's make it even easier and let's make it into a package up solution so that you have a complete soup to nuts reference that can enable you to build the cyber vault and protect against ransomware so that was that was the second part and then the third part was really about continuing to be the data foundation for enterprise AI. And I know you interviewed today partners from NVIDIA, from Lenovo. We have these incredible partnerships going back uh, a decade or more with both, really. And we've really tightened those relationships over the last five years, coming out with 
you know, our first convergent infrastructure stack with NVIDIA in 2018, building that joint partnership we've had with Lenovo over the last couple of years, and now bringing them all together into one happy family with the uh, NetApp uh, AI pod with, Len with Lenovo, NetApp AI pod with Lenovo for NVIDIA OVX. Say that three times fast. I have to say it's long. It's but, long, but it's, it's great. very long. It's got yeah. all the words in it, so yeah. Yeah, we actually talked about it because we, we came up with this uh, power law distribution of Gen AI, and, yeah. and we, we talk about the fact that a lot of people were focused on the far left side of it where yeah. the big, huge models are being built, yeah. but really where the most of the work is going to be done is down that power law yeah. out in the financial services and telco, you're going to have the telcos putting things like this out at base stations so that you can do inference and you can do Gen AI based applications much more close to where that milliseconds count and right. things of that nature. And that would seem like a big, a big theme is Again, we're going where the AI needs to be. Yeah. Bring the AI to the data. Yeah, it's all about, I mean, a lot of people have used the phrase democratization of AI, right? So there's certainly going to be the big five or 10 people training these huge LLMs. And there certainly will be large enterprise training LLMs. And we do have solutions for them, right? So our SuperPod solutions with NVIDIA and others. So we're not, not participating in that space. Um, but we recognize for a lot of them, they're going to just rent C GPUs on the cloud. For a lot of those large scale, even if they want to train a large language model, it's hard to get that many GPUs together, right? And so right. you go to the cloud to train your model. But then when you want to go ahead and actually make it an ongoing part of your enterprise, that's where the fine tuning, inferencing, and retrieval augmented generation come in. And that's where these sort of targeted architectures like OVX really are going to start to shine. Yeah, but even with the cloud, you're there because of the hybrid nature of ONTAP as Correct. well. Absolutely, yeah. No, we're in all the major cloud vendors. Yeah. So that, that's the awesome thing for us is we can support you wherever the data is and wherever you are on that pipeline. And that really is what we want to do is let you in, in this case, the GPUs are probably the most valuable and scarce resource, so let's bring the data wherever those GPUs are that you want to use and make it seamless in doing that, and that's exactly what ONTAP is able to do with intelligent data infrastructure. So in all the conversations that we've had today here on theCUBE, two things are really clear. Number one, and that is NetApp's really strong culture of innovation, mm -hmm. and number two, that it has a real partner-first philosophy yes. in, in how it goes about business. Yes. And then just the example you were talking about earlier about co-collaborating, co co co-creating with your customers. Yes. How do you do that? I mean, I think that that is the secret sauce that so many other customers and, and technology companies are trying to emulate and trying to do. Have you determined any best practices in terms of working hand in glove with customers? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways I think we structurally do it, and I could probably give a, a dissertation on it, but <laughs> um, I think, you know, our chief commercial office, we built an entire practice that's designed about how do we connect sales into the rest of the company and really operationalize things in both ways, right? So how do we bring best practices out to our salespeople, and how do we bring all the feedback from them and really pour it into the central channel? The other part is, you know, COVID was hard for us because our product team spends a lot of time out with customers, right? And so. Um, we're constantly on the road, I'm constantly on the road. I think Sandeep lives on an airplane, yeah. I'm not quite sure, <laughs> oh. but he is, he is everywhere and, and it's amazing. And so we're just constantly talking with customers. So a lot of the Cyber Vault idea came from several of us who were meeting with customers who had done it, and so we literally were just out there meeting with customers. So obviously there's, there's a scalability limit, right? And that's when we have specific processes in place to bring it in, but it's just this relentless obsession with what do the customers want to do next, right? And how can we help meet them where they're skating to, right? And that's just where a lot of our, a lot of our innovation is. And that's kind of at the heart of, of how we build things. It's, it's where is the market going to go? Where do our customers want to go? And how can we help them? And it's a real mindset of having mm -hmm. to think that way and training your people to think that way. We, we, we always joke that the AFF, which is our bread and butter now, really let us in all flash and everything. Even before it existed, people were taking our old FAS systems and putting all SSDs in them. Even though we said it wasn't technically supported, and they're like, this is absolutely amazing, you guys should do this, and we're like, okay, so there's obviously some engineering work to, uh, to rigorize that, but that's the sort of customer-led innovation, partnered innovation, partnering with these huge partners, you had Jenny on, right? So the, all these huge partners we work with, um, I, I spend so much of my time with partners, and they're just a part of our family. Yeah, I, I think that, I mean, having been at NetApp myself, yeah. We, yeah. you know, we worked together yeah, long, a, while a, a, while, a while ago, <laughs> a, while. A, a, moon, a moon or two. Yeah, exactly. and, but I, I always loved the culture, and I, yeah. I think to me that was always, and it was engineering, you know, 
just really building stuff that customers wanted. Yeah. And I, I think one of the things that Sandeep and I were talking about, again, you, you know, the base technology back then, you know, everybody loved the snapshots. Yeah. And then seeing what's being done yeah. to make them immutable and air gapped and with Cyber Vault and stuff like that, it, really cyber resilience is yeah. just such a key thing to customers these yeah. days. I, it, you must be hearing that from the customers oh, all the time. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, day in and day out, right? It's, it's, what I say talking to every customer, right, is every customer has a chief fear and a chief opportunity, right? And the chief opportunity is AI, yeah. with a little bit of fear of what do I do about AI, right? But, and then the chief fear is ransomware, right? Because it's, it's very much the sort of thing that can turn a bright sunny day into like the worst day of your work life, right, in, in an instant when you get that attack. So now everyone's worried about it, everyone's trying to find it. And you know, the dangerous thing about ransomware is we all know that no system is going to be foolproof, right? You're going to get attacked by ransomware over time, right? There's the joke like there's two type of companies, those that have been hit by ransomware attack and those that don't know they've already been hit by a ransomware attack, right? It's, so everyone's going to get hit. And so you can't go out there and say, we've got the solution, right? We've got the cure. You're going to be 100% immune to it. And that's hard for IT people because we're used to thinking in binary terms. Like, I want to come up with a solution that's going to work, that's going to block me from ransomware. And so it's all about what's my best threat avoidance, what's my risk avoidance, and where can I really help invest? And that's really what we've been doing in NetApp is how can we take all these technologies we have and make it easier for, for people to consume. Yeah, and you even came out with it, part of this whole announcement was the guarantee around that as yeah. well. Which, yeah, we've had the ransomware recovery guarantee yeah. now for I think a year, maybe 18 yeah. months or yeah. so, and we've continued to strengthen it because and, and that ransomware recovery guarantee, I always say, it is marketing, and I mean that in the finest sense of the term, because we don't ever intend to pay out on it. Yeah. Okay, it's, it's not a guarantee where we went in the back room and said, okay, 10% of our customers are going to lose data, so we'll have to pay out this much, so we'll put this much. We literally, what the guarantee fundamentally says is we believe so strongly in our snapshots that any data that you have backed up in your snapshots, you're going to be able to recover from, right? So there's all the T's and C's. The lawyers who are watching this right now want me to say that you know there's no 100% proof against ransomware. Right. Um, but that's that's the heart of the guarantee is saying, hey, we trust so so much in this technology that we've hardened over the last 30 years that we know you're going to be able to get your data back from you if you put it in there. Jeff, you're going to get the final word on, okay. on this conference. What what are you taking back home with you after being here with the energy and the momentum and the excitement around these new products? Last I think, word. I think you said it, it's all about energy and momentum. You know, NetApp has been on a tear, right? If you look at, I'm not going to talk about the last quarter, but if you look at the three quarters before that, we've been performing extraordinarily well. And I think that the reason that matters to us is yes, we want to perform well, but it also means that we're on this incredibly sure footing to continue to innovate for customers. And so you just see everyone here having, I mean, the theme of this place is a festival, right? And it really is a party and it's not a, a debauchery party, it's a let's go <laughs> learn, we're so excited to be here, right? And, that, and that's cool, right? Because it's a job, um, but it's not just a job for a lot of us, it's a passion, we love helping customers, we love coming to work. So much of my family is here, I don't know how many hugs I've gotten from people I haven't seen in years, right? Um, and so that, that's the energy and momentum that we're all going to in the next couple days, take back to our partners, take back to our customers, and really drive everything that we launched today for unified data storage. Into the AI era. Into the AI era. Jeff, thank you so much for coming on theCUBE. A real pleasure having you. Thank you for having me, I appreciate it. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Strache. That wraps up theCUBE's live coverage of NetApp Converge. Stay tuned for more. You are watching theCUBE, the leader in technology enterprise news, coverage, and analysis.